Hello, this is Steve from Beedos Leatherworks, and today's projects are we're going to do some leather alterations to these beautiful jackets. All right, so our first jacket is a part ostrich, part cowhide leather jacket that was made for them uh, in New Jersey somewhere. Um, the backstory on this is that when they first met, uh, the couple went on vacation and, and happened to stroll across a um, ostrich um, factory, like a tannery. So they bought an ostrich skin and um, brought it back home and um, had this custom-made jacket made for them. Now, the jacket is a very cool jacket, but it was kind of made a little crudely. It was very thick around the edges of the hemmed areas. The collar is kind of thick. The cuff is is very heavy and, and just not very pliable compared to that. So we're going to basically take the whole jacket apart. We're going to put a new lining in there. Seen its better days. I mean, it is over 20 years old. And um, redesign the front area here. And all the ostrich that we have, we're going to take apart and skive the edges and hem them back so we get a nicer, a little bit thinner, more pliable feel to the jacket. And then the add new pockets to it right here. And then basically condition the rest up and she'll be redesigned for 2022. This is approximately 20, 21 years old jacket. All right, let's get started. All right, the second one is a letterman's jacket, as you can see, and it is from 1978 to 1979. And as you can see that it's been, it's been used pretty, pretty well. And um, the person is going to basically restore this jacket for the owner and give it as a birthday present. But we, we kind of missed the deadline for the birthday because my schedule just did not, you know, allow me to finish it, you know, for the birthday. But basically we're going to disassemble this whole jacket. We're going to replace the sleeves with very similar leather. Replace the pocket edges here. Restitch all the patches back. Clean the rest of it. And then, um, and then basically make it look very presentable. And she can give it to the person as a belated birthday present. This is a very cool jacket. All right, let's continue. Third one is very similar to the Letterman jacket that we have. Now, this is a pretty cool jacket. Now, again, we're going to be replacing the sleeves. It's seen its better days. This is vinyl, unfortunately, it's not leather. So we're gonna replace the sleeves with this leather right here. Very close to what we have. This is so much more pliable and I think it'll last for many years to come. The pocket edge is here. And the problem is, the problem here is that these patches are embroidered onto the actual material. So it's not a patch we can just remove and put it back on. So we're gonna to have to cut around the edges and salvage them and stitch them on exactly the same spot as he has. And um, once it gets done, I think he'll have many years of life. And we're not gonna do much with the back because obviously the body of the jacket is still in good shape. There's nothing we can, we're gonna do about these. Maybe just clean the body of it and make it look a little bit more presentable. I think once it gets done, he'll have many, many years of wear out of it. All right, let's continue. All right, so as you can see, they're very cool jackets and I can't wait to finish them. Now, I'm gonna try my best to see if I can get a reaction from each customer. And then with that reaction, we'll incorporate it to these videos. So you'll get an idea of what the customer thought about the repairs. Now, I've been away for a little while. I haven't done any videos, maybe in, I don't know, maybe about a month or so, whatever, however long that is. Um, you know, sometimes life, you have to deal with things that come up. And um, past year, it's been kind of up and down roller coaster emotionally with me. And um, I haven't forgot to make videos, you know, I'm always here. But my workload at the shop is just tremendous and I'm by myself and I try to keep up with everything that I can. Some things I get delayed on and others I get done a little faster. So you don't really have time to make videos, longer videos like I usually do. But this one definitely is gonna be a nice video. Now uh, for the new viewers, um, there was some comments and concerns about you know my hands shaking. Listen, my hands shake. Okay, it is what it is. I don't know why it shakes. When I was growing up in Lebanon um, during the Civil War, it started in that in that area where the time frame around 10 years old, 11 years old. Now, once 
I've seen some doctors and, and everything seems to be fine. It's just, it just shakes. I don't know why it shakes. And when I drink coffee and don't sleep much, it kind of aggravates that a little bit more. And it's more noticeable with you guys when, when you're watching me. I don't notice it when I'm, when I'm working, I'm fine, you know? But anyway, if you don't like it, it's okay. Just fast forward and get to the good parts. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's start with these projects and get them done to the customers and get some response videos back. All right, let's get started. Righty, righty, righty. We got a nice ostrich skin to make the pocket edges out of, right? So we're gonna use that. It matches that perfectly to what they have. All right, time to start triggering people. <laughs> Let's sharpen our disposable blades. Hey man, you're so cheap you can't afford new blades. What's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, man, I wake up sometimes and can't wait to trigger people. <laughs> All right, man, let's get serious. Now we gotta basically break this whole jacket down. Literally, we're gonna disassemble the whole jacket and um, and we're not gonna salvage anything as far as a lining. Well, we're gonna reuse the buttons. These right here, see the front, front panel right there? We're gonna change that style and then we're gonna take these two buttons that we have underneath and we're gonna reuse them for the ones that's missing there, okay? All right, let's continue. All right, people always want to know what I'm wearing as far as watch is concerned. This is not a Rolex. This is a Folex, okay? Get that straight. This is a very cool watch. It's pretty heavy, even though it's not a Rolex. It's very cool. Um, a customer donated that to me, which I'm greatly appreciative. And also what shoes I'm wearing. I'm wearing my Alan Edmonds Daltons this morning. Cool, huh? Burnish the toes a little bit. <clears throat> All right, enough about me. Let's get down to business. All right, basically, we're going to start with starting to remove the lining out of the way. And when you're taking something apart like this, you don't really have to slice at the thread, right? If you pull the two apart and it's the, the thread is, is basically it's not coming apart, if you just touch the thread, it'll go for another like two inches. You, know, you can go like that, very simple, very fast, take it apart. All right, so let me tell you guys what skiving means, right? So whenever you have a piece of leather that you're making um, and you have to hem the edge, just imagine the hem of your, your jeans, for example, right? You just turn the edge over to have a more of a finished look rather than a raw edge like that, okay? So when you fold this over, you get the double thickness of the leather. Then you've got another piece over here that's gonna fold next to it. Now you got three layers, sometimes four layers, because you've got to hem this side also. Well, that just feels very bulky. It's not very good when you're making something that you've got to hem the edges. Now, we call it skiving. Basically, skiving is you skive the edge. That's a bell skiver that you're looking at. And when you skive the edge, you're taking half the thickness off of the leather. Because when you fold it over, now it becomes one thickness. Thickness, the original thickness is what you have. This way it's nice and thin profile. It's not so bulky when you have another piece behind it and it gives it a much, much cleaner look that way. Unfortunately with the jacket, they didn't do that, right? They just kind of folded it over and, and be done with it. So all these pieces, we've got to take apart, clean all the stitches, skive the edges and then reassemble it back. Once it gets done, that'll be much, much better than what it is right now. Visually, it may not look that much different, but you know what? It's going to feel a lot different because we have, oh, look, they put a piece in here. See that's cut and they reinforce the back. We'll do something a little better than that. All right, let's continue.
All right, so that's the chest piece, one of the chest pieces. So we're gonna, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Actually, it's right here. We might do like a Western shape or maybe straight across. I think straight across might be better since the back piece has got, has got that line. So maybe we'll do that. We'll figure something out. Make stuff up as we go along. All right, let's continue. So you guys get the idea, right? This is the cuff. Now we thin that out. We skived it. And when you fold this over, it's not very thick at all. It's more pliable and it's not as bulky when it gets done. This is the shoulder piece. It goes right here. So we took it apart, skived the edges, all right, and then shortened it a little bit. Remember this was, basically this was like this. Okay, we cut that piece off and we're gonna stitch the end, the double stitches like it has everywhere else to match that pattern. I think that pattern will look much better than it'll match the back, we get rid of the button, buttonhole, It'll look more sleeker that way. A little more refined. All right, so far we've got that shoulder apart. We trimmed the edges. We resized it. Now we had another piece underneath here that made it quite bulky, like that. So once we resized this piece, we got rid of that. We don't need that. So the after after it's been done, it's going to lighten up a lot around the shoulder area here. It's not going to feel so bulky. Bulky. <sighs> bulky. You understand what I mean. And this was the other piece that was underneath this piece here. So you had two pieces that were just there for no reason. We'll get rid of those. All right. Let's continue. <laughs> stitch is done on the collar then we get to run another one about a quarter inch on the side and now the collar feels much 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 softer more pliable than it did before all right let's continue now when you look at a collar let's turn this machine off you have two pieces basically you have the top and you have the bottom right now in order for a collar to sit properly like that the top and the bottom have got to be different sizes. What do I mean by that? So the distance here, let's say this is three inches. The back is going to be two and a half. Because you want that leather to kind of sit like that. If it was the same length, it wouldn't sit properly. It would kind of, it would kind of be dis, disfigured, dis, deformed looking. Same goes with the distance here. The back piece is always smaller because you want that collar to curve down. If it was the same length, then it wouldn't sit right. All right, let's continue. All right, now we've got the stitching done on the shoulders, the back piece. This is taking forever to do because you've got to take apart everything. You clean the threads, restitch everything. This is the bottom band, waistband collar everything's ready to be stitched back now the cuffs are going to go on last so once the stitching gets done here i make the new pockets then i've got to make the lining assemble the lining together and then put the waistband and the cuffs on the last and we'll be done with this thing all right let's continue all right so the stitching is all done the collar's done Shoulders, shoulder pieces, the back, an ambulance coming by. All right, now we get to work on the pockets, okay? Now the customer had a request that would fit an iPhone in there. So we gotta make sure that 
the lining will accommodate that but you got to be careful though because you, you don't have that much room here so you see this is the bottom that would be the bottom of the pocket and obviously right there you can't do too much so we'll do as much as we can to see if we can fit some so this is i don't know what number this is but this is an old phone so we'll make it as large as possible to accommodate her wishes all right let's continue Never fail. As soon as I'm about to light a cigar, the wind gust comes up. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy, lord. We're taking a little coffee break. Enjoying the traffic drive-by. It's 55 degrees here in Falls Church, Virginia. Very nice day, a little overcast, but still got some sun. Take a little coffee break. That project that I'm working on now, the black jacket. Let's wait till the trucks drive by. The husband has his father's jacket that I did, but I didn't make a video of that one. That one, we put a new lining, cleaned and dyed it, conditioned, added some zippers. I just didn't have the time to record that one, but it has a great story behind it. And um, I'm gonna have to print out the, the email that he sent me because it's pretty long. I'll see if I can, you know, get tidbits of information out of it to let you guys know it belonged to his father. Really cool jacket. It's seen some, it's seen some, you know, history, definitely. We call this Armenian coffee, by the way, not Turkish coffee. Please don't call it Turkish coffee. Please don't call it Turkish coffee, okay? Armenian coffee. The Greeks call it Greek coffee. The Arabs call it Arabic coffee. What else? And the European, Eastern European <laughs> call it their own coffee. Oh, it's coffee. All right, you're going to ask. I might as well tell you. La Gloria Cubana. Let's see if I can focus on this. You guys see that? Maduro R Series. Now, usually this cigar is uh, Maduro, meaning, you know, dark tobacco leaves and um, it's best to smoke that on a, a full stomach because it's pretty strong but 
after drinking this coffee, I think my stomach can handle it. <laughs> All right, let's continue. we're getting there we got our pockets done i mean if you look at the pockets if you didn't tell anybody they were added on they would never guess they were added on they turn out pretty good I'll clean some glue a little bit over there not too bad not too bad we're getting there slowly but surely
me show you guys a little something. This is part of the sleeve right here. You see those little notches? That's where you basically bring this, the little notches together and it forms a pleat when the sleeves get done. Just like that. And the cuff comes on top of it like that. See, and I've had my coffee too. <laughs> All right, so we're almost done with this project. Yeah, I know. Look at my fingers. Those are just glue. It'll come off later. I'll clean it up later. We're going to stitch the buttons on now. Now, if you notice, sometimes on leather jackets, the buttons are not flat on the surface of. Oh, I got to move the camera real quick. Got to get my light underneath it. So I was saying the buttons are not flat on the surface of the jacket. There's a reason for that. Like on regular suits, you have you have you know you have buttons that are kind of flush with the, the fabric. But with leather jackets, they tend to be a little bit higher, like that, because it has to get around that fat buttonhole. If it's too flat. On the surface here, it'll never go through that. I mean, you'll have a, you'll you'll be sitting there fighting with the damn thing, and and you won't it won't go through. It just won't do it. All right, Let me show you guys real quick. So we got a button in the back. This looks like a little spaceship, doesn't it? <laughs> What I normally do, I'll go through, you know, from bottom top, bottom top about, because I'm recording, this gets tangled up. Oh, Jesus Christ. Really? Man, I've been at this too long today. My fuse is short. This thing is... is is a labor of love, let me tell you. That's for dang sure. All right, where was I? All right, so I was saying that most of the time when I sew buttons on, I'll go through about three times through the button through the bottom button. Let's do one more. Now my my thread is double. I've doubled the thread here. Okay. All right. Once the third one's done, I loosen that up just a little bit. It's not it's not tight just yet. I loosen that up a little bit and wrap this around the button about maybe six to eight times until you get that nice height. You see? Now the last two, I lock it in. One more. And then cut it. And that's it. 
it won't come loose very easily now. All right, let's continue. All right, we are done with another project. Look at that. Nice new lining. Pockets. I know visually when you're looking at it, it's just very similar to what it was. Okay, but it's not, as you saw, took a lot of things apart and put them back together. Buttons on the sleeves, front panels got replaced or reshaped. I still got to put a coat of conditioner on it and we'll be done with this job. All right, let's continue. So this is the other jacket that we did. Um, we basically, we cleaned and re-dyed it, added a new lining. The zippers got replaced. He wanted to salvage the old zippers. Now this belonged to his dad. So I'm gonna summarize the story because it's, it's, it's a lot of details in it. Basically it belonged to his dad. His dad worked for a long time. And um, he finally put it in the closet, wasn't going to wear it, wasn't wearing it. His son found it. He said, you know, what's this? And and uh, dad said, it's just an old jacket. And um, so he tried it on and it fit him. So he wore it for a couple of years and he had an accident with it. And um, and fast forward, he put it in a closet and, and stopped wearing it himself. Now, his son is approximately his age when he he asked his dad about the jacket. So now... This is the third generation that is going to wear it. It, it fits the grandson, and the grandson basically wants to wear it, and that's why they restored it. Now, the grandfather still, is still with us, the father and the son. So all three of them, well, both of them wore it. Now it's time for the youngest one to wear it and enjoy it. So basically, that's, that's really about, about the you know, gist of the story. It's a beautiful jacket. And it's got some history, and um, I think that once uh, once they start wearing, once he starts wearing it, it'll break in a little bit more because once the leather gets dyed, it becomes a little bit stiffer. So you got to kind of break that in as you wear it. But overall, I mean, it's still in great shape for the age of the age of the jacket. I think it's very cool. So that's 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 about the you know short of the story. It's a beautiful jacket, and um, I think that I think that they're going to be very happy when they get it back. All right, let's continue. All right, well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to finish the other two, so we're going to do this in three-part video. So obviously, this is going to be the first one, then second, and third one. Now, I'm going to ship this jacket off tomorrow. Hopefully, in a few days, we'll get a box opening response video from the customer. I'll incorporate it with this, and then I'll upload it. So today is the 4th of April, so I'm hoping by Friday in a few days, we'll be ready to upload it. And you guys can see the reaction of the customer. If you guys haven't subscribed, please do so and hit that bell notification button. So when I upload, you'll get notified. And if you have any questions, give me an email. Give me an email. I'm tired. Send me an email. Bedos at yahoo.com. And I'll do my best to answer in a timely manner. All right. We'll see you guys in the next project. Take care. Okay. Major reveal. Okay. Well, before we reveal. so. Okay. These are the jackets that we got done uh, at, uh, at Beatles. Yes. And uh, obviously we're very excited, but this, there's a story behind those uh, jackets. The jackets, uh, the jacket uh, started out basically as a piece of leather in Curacao about 20 something years ago. Was that 23 first? years. 23 years ago. Yeah. First trip together yeah. Yeah. outside of the country. Yeah. With passports involved. As American citizens. Wow. <laughs> So, and it was an awesome trip. And on the trip, we found a piece of leather at an ostrich farm. And it was interesting. So we just bought it. We bought the piece of leather and uh, we brought it back here. And little did we know how much trouble there would be in actually making it into a product because ostrich leather is very thick. It's difficult to work with. It's got those dimples on it. Yeah. And uh, it took like six months to find somebody to actually make it into a jacket. It was a fun process, looking through magazines, picking something out. Yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. 23 um, years ago. And I wore it for a long time. And it's time to... Uh, and it's time, it, was, it was time to get it refreshed. It's time to get it refreshed. We yeah. all need a refresh on tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so... It needed to be rejuvenated. Rejuvenated. So here's the box. Well, what about the other jacket? It's 
Well, it's in the same box. Okay, but the other jacket has a history. The other jacket does has to have a history, but uh, the other jacket, uh, the second jacket, has a, an interesting history too. It's 63 years old. Uh, it was my father's jacket. It was the first thing that he really bought when he was out on his own. Uh, I think he got it from a man named Borat in Kazakhstan. <laughs> well, I don't know about the Borat part, but it, but came it wasn't from, Kazakhstan. But he bought it in Kazakhstan when he was still in Russia, and uh, it was his first uh, work-related uh, trip, uh, different times, and he wore it. He brought brought it to America. I wore it, and uh, over the course of time, it just became old, needed to be refreshed, and uh, the idea is to give it to our son, so and maybe. The other son who's holding the, uh, the camera. camera and uh, just pass it on and, and, and let the jacket uh, keep living and uh, well we, we, anyway we can't wait so. all right okay let's do it ready yeah, okay all right this is a process of making all right all yourself with the scissors because uh, yeah, that would be because uh, yeah, that would be bad. that would be most unfortunate. All right. There's a note. I'm going to look at the note. It says, uh, Dear Mr. Cooperman, I enjoyed working on your jacket a lot. It's on me. No, I'm kidding, Steve. <laughs> yeah. But thank you for the lovely note. Uh, I can't wait to see it. And, uh, you know, again, uh, it's something that we're really, really looking forward to. All right. So. All right. So first is the ostrich. All right. All right. Okay. So let's uh, do the reveal. All right. uh, it's, it's looking better. It's feeling better. Uh, wow. That. Look at that. Try that. It has been refreshed. It's got pockets. Look at that. Oh yeah, for the cell phone. For the and cell phone, yeah. candy. <laughs> try it on, try it on. Try it on? Yeah, All right, okay, try it on. Yeah. New liner. Yeah. Everything is brand new. All right, this jacket, I was what, how old? Not very old. Okay, not very old. <laughs> <laughs> 22 years ago. Okay, kids, like a glove. Nice. It looks good. And, uh, and how do the pockets fit? Perfect. Very nice. Steve, you've outdone yourself. This is amazing. For what it was, and, and it sat in the closet for years and years, it actually looks like a brand new jacket again. Yeah, I can't wait to wear it out tonight. Oh. Right. Friday night, and it's dinner. Dinner night. Let's take a look at jacket number two. There's so much, it's this jacket could talk and tell so many stories. Yeah, but. It's, it's, oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Wow, look at that. It's, it's gorgeous, it's yeah. beautiful. So, I mean, things like the zipper, where it, where it was dying and there was this flame. So, I put it on. And the thing of this, the thing about this jacket, it, it, it still has its. It feels like it's uh, in the a leather, 1959 yeah. jacket. And the leather has been reconditioned. And the leather's been reconditioned. Yeah, because it had like it wore it off. Yeah, my dad's a little smaller than me, so it's a little tight, and that's okay because Ira is going to. Ira is a teenager. Yeah. So. Uh, it's a full jacket. And the fact that it's 63 years old. Yeah. I mean, what does it say? A lot. Yeah. And it's just that it can live another 63 years. That's awesome. Steve, thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much. This has been amazing. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you.